In August of 2019, word came out that not only are we getting a Snake Eyes film, but Paramount and Hasbro are working on another ensemble film which will feature the Hawaiian shirt clad, one of a kind, Chuckles. So it's perfect time to continue our G.I. Joe series with a focus on Chuckles. Before we begin, I want to thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more. Don't forget to share this and subscribe so you don't miss all of our videos we make each week just like this one. Let's get on to the video. Philip M. Provost grew up in the capital of Arkansas, which is Little Rock. After quite a few years, he eventually moved from Arkansas to Florida to work as an investigator in the field for an insurance firm in Fort Lauderdale, where I'm making these videos from, by the way, before finding himself in the employ of the United States Army's CID, the Criminal Investigations Division. He specializes in intelligence and undercover work, but his primary MOS is criminal investigations. He's the guy you want to crack a beer with, trade stories from downrange with. He's jovial and fun, but make no mistake about it, this casual Hawaiian shirt wearing guy is the one you'd be lucky to have covering your six. The next evolution of his clandestine career was as an operative with G.I. Joe. Both his V1 action figure and his debut issue in Larry Hama's Marvel Comics series occurred in 1987, and his first issue is issue 60. In issue 60, Lieutenant Falcon, along with Law and his dog Order, picked up Hawk and brought him from North Miami at the Jersey Shore, complete with Beachside Drive and plastic palm trees. A corrupt cabal of generals at the Pentagon had stolen a massive rocket, written it off the books after an IG investigation, and, and hid it inside an, a hollow casino high-rise right on the beach. They pulled some soldiers off of the various duties and assignments, tasked them with protecting this rocket, and told them that they had been chosen for the G.I. Joe teams. The rocket's targeting coordinates were set directly on Cobra Island. And Chuckles was investigating the generals in this entire operation, so he tracked down the secret operatives, told them it was all a lie, and they weren't actually G.I. Joes. So they all find themselves at this beachside hotel and casino, which as I said was housing this massive missile launch center complete with a giant crawler transporter, the same size that NASA used to use for transporting shuttles and Apollo and Saturn rockets. It's massive. So Zorana and the Dreadnoughts attacked just as the missile was launched and Chuckles bravely went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, fighting off the whole gang. He was beaten and bruised, but he fought them off. The missile was destroyed, but at least it didn't fall into Cobra's hands. These heroics convinced Hawk to take them all on as new G.I. Joes. Chuckles showed up at the Pentagon in his Miami Vice suit, burst into the One Star General's office, and instead of pulling a gun from a holster on him, he whipped out a pen. And he left the pen on the desk as he walked out, letting them know it was to sign their resignations. Chuckles showed up again in issue 63 where he, Hawk, Jinx, and Law and & Order met up secretly with Billy who is now training under Jinx and Hardmaster. He then went to the barracks at the new pit compound in Utah, met the rest of the team, and immediately found himself investigating some mysterious noises in the dark and massive tracks in the dirt, which ended up relating to another rocket and another launch. Chuckles was often out in the field on covert missions to gather intel. In G.I. Joe's special missions, Chuckles and the team were monitoring the Cobra Consulate when it was invaded by Sierra Gordon revolutionaries. They took power gliders to the rooftop. The revolutionaries went to blow up the building, but Chuckles, gas mask on, revealed that he had sold them CS riot gas instead of C4 explosives, all to plant a bug in the consulate. Orally complicated, but hey, it worked. Later, he and Roadblock had to escort Prince Nyoto from Oxford back to his homeland. He went to the Byrne Institute in Switzerland to investigate the physician who called the Baroness after Snake Eyes checked in for treatment. He was also serving as an advisor to the RCMP in Montreal to track down these Cobra enclaves and report them to the Mounties to take down. They had warehouses full of Terradrome parts and equipment earmarked for different parts of the globe stored in Canada. A few months later, Industro had semi-retired to his castle in Scotland with the Baroness. They'd hire a gamekeeper named McKeith. But Cobra had an attack planned on the castle at the same time the Joes were investigating and Billy and Zartan rolled up on bicycles to seek revenge for trying to kill them. Anyway, McKeith turned out to be Chuckles. Pulled a mission impossible with the fake face. Chuckles helped them escape. Billy and Zartan rolled up in the Cobra helicopter to pick up the three. Billy knocked out Zartan as the Baroness was shot in the back and left in the ground, leaving Billy, Zartan, and Chuckles to fly the helicopter to the south of France. Destro vowed revenge on Cobra Commander with Chuckles committing to help. Off the books, of course. They went to one of Chuckles' contacts at a scrapyard in Marseille, France, and traded the helicopter for a 65 Renault 16. Chuckles figured he would rat them out. A $20 million contract was out on Destro, and he did the BTF in Beirut. They parked the Renault outside of a lair of the Corsican Brotherhood. The BTF saw it, stormed the lair clad in balaclavas, and carrying assault weapons. The ensuing gunfight was actually cover for the old tramp steamer to sneak away from port into the Mediterranean. Chuckles, Billy, Zartan, and 
and Destro, of course, were on this vessel. Except the Night Creepers had the BTF phones tapped and fast roped from a Gila onto the ship. They took all of them down, and a wrist rocket from Destro took out the Night Creeper helicopter. They hid in the kitchen freezer to trick the Night Creepers infrared scanners as the steamer bore down on a flimsy dock on the Beirut waterfront. They made it ashore and met up with Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, and the new Ninja Force. Wild Bill picked them all up in a C-130 and took them to Zurich so they could then leap out the back with some gliders and attack Night Creepers headquarters. They installed a virus which would wipe out Cobra Commander's funds and bank accounts unless he freed the Baroness and cancelled the contract on him. Issue 140, Chuckles is driving a Yojo Cola truck which deploys the Ninja Force team to an Arbco semi bound for the Cobra-controlled town of Millville. Later, after the decommissioning in non-canon time, Cobra had Chuckles held hostage in Springfield, now abandoned. Lady J clutching gung-ho freedom, but Chuckles takes a handgun from Lady J's holster and shot one of the Cobra right in the head. And it looked like flat-out revenge murder, but it turns out the guy had a weapon on his lower back that he was about to use on LJ, so Chuckles actually saved her. They went back to the Joe base where Duke wanted Chuckles to interrogate Storm Shadow, but Chuckles told him I don't do renditions. Scarlet yelled at him to make sure he extracts everything they need to find Snake Eyes. He was out in the field during Cobra World Order in issue 223 to stop the CGs from shutting down a transformer farm and taking out the power to five states. Crazy Fred, yes they let a guy named Crazy Fred work at a power plant, shot him in the shoulder but he took out this Fred before he did any real damage. He was sent to the hospital for rehab and then he shows up on the cover of issue 259 with CoverGirl and what looks like a 488 spider to me. And that's the last time we saw him in comic books, but like I said, he's alive and well, and he's working at the pit. He's running covert ops, intel analysis, and interrogations at the pit. In the animated realm, Chuckles was introduced in G.I. Joe the movie as a new recruit along with Law & Order, Falcon, Tunnel Rat, Jinx, and a couple others. And incidentally, Larry Hama named Chuckles Philip Provost after the son of one of his friends. And that is the story of Chuckles, from comic books to animated, and now soon to be in live action as well. Anyways, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, corrections, and suggestions down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be a part of all of our videos new and old. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.